let's continue with our meterpeter commands. So we only covered navigating through file system and some essential commands between switching sessions inside of a meterpeter, but we didn't really touch on those interesting commands such as running keylogger or snapping a screenshot or recording microphone. But before we get to them, there is one portion of the commands that we must go through first and those are system commands. Let us run the help menu to check them out. So if I scroll all the way up, right after the networking commands, we should see the system commands. And here there are a few interesting ones. For example, let's start with this execute command right here. So this command allows us to execute any type of the command that we would use inside of a shell. It will most likely run this on a separate thread, so we will be able to execute different commands simultaneously. Let me show you what I mean. So for example, let's say that I want to start a calculator on the target machine. I can type execute calc and here it will tell me that I need to specify the dash F option. Process 9096 is created and right here I got my calculator opened. Now if I wanted to terminate this process or any other process, Inside of the system commands, we also get this kill command that says terminate a process. But for this command, we need to know the process ID. So here we got the process ID as soon as we started this process, but let's say we wanted to terminate a different process. How would we get its process ID? Well, remember, we can type the command PS to list out all of the files that are currently running on the target system. And this left column right here is the process ID. If I scroll all the way up, here we can see PID or process ID. And I can scroll all the way down and at the end, somewhere around here, we should see our calculator being open. Let's go and search it. So search for the calculator application. And if I scroll a little bit up, we should be able to find it somewhere around here. And here it is, calculator.txt. So we can see the process ID is 8412. Let's try to kill this process and see whether our calculator closes. So if I go and copy this process ID, 8412, and down here I type kill and then paste the process ID, here we can see the calculator is now gone. So we can start different programs and terminate different programs if we want to using a meterpeter shell. A few more interesting commands from the system commands would be probably this reboot command that reboots the remote computer. Now I'm not going to test this because I'm running my shell on the main Windows 10 operating system so rebooting that machine would be no good since I'm also recording on it. Besides rebooting, we can also shut down the target machine just by specifying the command shutdown and you can test both of these commands on a virtual machine. And at the end we also get the system information, so gets information about the remote system such as OS. And that is always useful to know, some of the additional information about the target machine. Here we can see the computer, the OS, the architecture, the system language and other options as well. But I said that we're going to cover some of the interesting commands right here in this video and let's get straight into them. So after the system commands, we get these user interface commands. And here we can control mouse, keyboard, record microphones, run screenshots and bunch of other cool options that we're going to cover right now. So let's start for example with this mouse option, send mouse events. Let's see how that would work. If I just type mouse inside of the meterpeter, it gives us a small usage for this command. So mouse and then the action, we can type click, up, down, right click, right up, right down, double click, and so on and so on. We can also move the mouse if we want to. So let's try this command. If I copy, mouse move, and then paste right here. Let us put the mouse right here, and if I press enter, here the mouse moved on its own. Let's do it once again. Did you see it? It moves on its own so we can control the mouse on the target machine. 
Now, even though this is cool, it is not really that useful, however, there are other commands that we would find a lot more useful than these, such as, for example, running a keylogger. Let's see how we can run a simple keylogger. So if I scroll all the way up, here we get the commands keyscan start, keyscan stop, and keyscan dump. Hmm. Let's give them a try. If I copy this command that says start capturing keystrokes, input it inside of my interpreter, it says starting the keystroke sniffer. Now, let's go to this page, and this is a PayPal page, and I'm just going to type something random right here. So let's say example at gmail.com, and password will be test1234. If I click on login, of course, this account does not exist, but let's go right here and see whether our interpreter shell managed to capture it. To print out the keystrokes that were captured, we can type keyscan underscore dump. Press enter, and here it is, example shift at gmail.com, and here is the password, test1234. To stop a keylogger, we can type keyscan underscore stop, and this will stop capturing keystrokes. So this is really useful if you want to capture the messages that they're sending online, or basically whatever they type on their keyboard, you can capture it by typing keyscan underscore start, and then you can type keyscan underscore dump to dump all of the keystrokes that they captured in that specific time lapse. Great, let's check out more options as well. So another interesting one is the one that we already covered, which is the screenshot option. As it says, grab a screenshot of the interactive desktop if we run it real quick. This will save a screenshot inside of the slash home slash Mr. Hacker directory. And we can visit it by clicking on this open folder. And here is the screenshot. So it is the screenshot of our Cal Linux machine because my Cal Linux machine is running on this Windows 10 machine. But what if I wanted to, for example, see what the target is doing? Or simply just record the screen at the live time? Well, there is a command called screen share. And it says watch the remote user's desktop in real time. We can type it right here, screen share. And this will start streaming the target's desktop to our Cal Linux machine. Here it is. Now, this command knows to be a little bit buggy as it does require some of the power in order to run. As we can see right here, it can be buggy sometimes, but nonetheless, we can see the target's desktop. Let us close this real quick. And another command that I wanted to show you that is really cool is recording the target's desktop. How we can do that? If I type the help command, go up here. Here we can see these commands right here. Record mic, record audio from the default microphone for X seconds. We can also stream the webcam and take a snapshot from the specified webcam using these commands right here. But since my Windows 10 machine doesn't have a webcam, I'm not going to be running this. Of course, you can test these commands out if you got the webcam and see if they work. For now on, I'm going to record microphone on our Windows 10 target machine. Now, this command requires a parameter. We can specify the amount of seconds using dash D option. And I will specify 10 seconds. If I press here enter, this will start recording and it should capture what I'm speaking at the moment to the microphone. So here the 10 seconds finished and it saved the file inside of the slash home slash Mr. Hacker and this is the file name. You can listen it if you want to but for now on let us check out what other commands we have at the end of the help menu and we got these cool commands such as get system and hash dump. And believe it or not these commands could be the most useful out of all of the others that we covered. However, if I try to run the get system command inside of my interpreter shell, hmm, operation failed. They will not work. It seems we cannot get system privileges on the target machine. And just to remind you, system privileges are highest privileges on the Windows machine, even higher than the administrator. Once we get system level account, we can say we fully hacked that box. So, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to try to elevate our privileges in the next video 
by using post-exploitation modules. For now, we covered basic meterpreter commands and you saw how useful they are despite being so easy to run. We simply got a screenshot by running one command, we recorded a microphone by running one command, but it is time to get into more advanced things and running more advanced modules. See you in the next video.